Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life Extend Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the new X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above or in the link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. The Lifespan Heroes are Lifespan.io's patrons who make everything we do possible thanks to their generous donations. We recently announced a long overdue revamp of our Lifespan Heroes campaign, the crowdfunding initiative through which our supporters help us do what we do. We added new rewards for the heroes and new goals to the campaign. If we hit the new goals, we'll be able to expand our crowdsourcing and networking capabilities, provide more content to our readers and viewers, and even launch an in-house research project relevant to aging. If you'd like to find out more, then click the card above to see Lifespan.io's president, Keith Comito, explain everything you need to know. Don't forget to check out the new Lifespan Heroes campaign. You'll find the link in the description below. For our first story, a paper published on Nature illustrates a new immunotherapeutic cancer treatment that's proven very effective in mice. The immune system is naturally capable of dealing with cancer, but this ability diminishes with age. Immunotherapy is at the forefront of anti-cancer research, though not all patients respond equally to it. As this paper explains, a truly effective treatment that results in self-sustaining anti-tumor immunity must simulate three outcomes all at once. Number one, immunogenetic cancer cell death. Number two, inflammation. And number three, immune priming. The researchers claim to have succeeded in packing these three actions into one therapy, even better, into one injection, by creating lipid nanoparticles loaded with self-replicating RNA that codes for the cytokine interleukin-12, which they injected directly into the tumors. The effects of this therapy were confirmed in vivo in mice and in vitro across several types of human cancer cells. The membrane of the lipid nanoparticles alone proved toxic enough to stimulate the immune system to attack the cancer, although in the experiments, not all cancer cells died because of this. Phase 2 and 3 of the attack were carried out by the RNA payload within the lipid nanoparticles. Any foreign RNA within the tumor was sufficient to induce inflammation and trigger the immune response, but RNA coding for interleukin-12, which is a powerful stimulator of the immune system, did the job particularly well. The immune response elicited by the treatment was systemic. In mice with tumors in both flanks, the scientists treated only either flank and saw a therapeutic effect in both flanks anyway. The therapy was less effective against metastasized tumors, but it did improve outcomes anyway. It's estimated that curing cancer in humans will only raise life expectancy by about two to three years. So while we surely want to cure cancer, there's many other diseases that wreak havoc on human health. So shifting public awareness and research funding from cancer to all diseases of aging should be a better strategy to help increase lifespan and health span. For our next story, Leaf recently interviewed the co-founder of the company Chimer Med, Rick Kysig. Chimer Med is working on an experimental broad-spectrum antiviral drug called VTOS. Broad-spectrum antivirals are one of the holy grails of medical research in that they are drugs capable of knocking out several viruses at once. VTOS is a derivative of an older class of experimental antiviral compounds known as double-strand RNA-activated caspase oligomerizer, or DRACO for short. Like DRACO, VTOS is a multi-pronged drug that targets and ultimately causes the death of cells infected by viruses before they can create more and more copies of the virus. In Rick's interview, Rick told us about himself, his co-founder Phil Oliver, Chimer Med, and their plans, and of course, about Draco and Vitos itself. If you want to check out the interview, the link is in the description below. Moving on, a study from Pennington Biomedical Research Center, located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, suggests that enhancing blood sugar control from obese people suffering from type 2 diabetes improves certain cognitive skills. The article was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism and examined over 1,000 participants who were divided into two groups. One group held three sessions a year that focused on diet, physical activity, and social support 
while the participants in the other group followed a program to change their diet and physical activity regimen with the goal of shedding 7% of their body weight in a year. Participants took cognitive tests up to 13 years after the beginning of the study. While the researchers expected that physical activity and weight loss would clearly result in better cognitive test scores, the researchers observed that only improved blood sugar levels were clearly associated with this outcome. More exercise and more weight loss didn't always associate with better cognitive test results. The researchers also observed that the results were worse for people who were already obese at the beginning of the study, suggesting that being obese for too long might lead to long-lasting negative effects on cognition. For our final story, a new animal study investigated a substance known as norenginin, which is found in Ribus murieri and red currant. Norenginin is known for its antioxidant properties, but this study focused on norenginin's potential as an inhibitor of the pro-inflammatory signaling by senescent brain cells. The researchers tested norenginin both in vitro and in vivo in mice to analyze its effects on mouse neural stem cells. The researchers found that norenginin treatment reduced cell senescence markers in neural stem cells and improved neural stem cells proliferation, among other beneficial effects. Remember, this was just a mouse study, so no need to go and stockpile norenginin just yet. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, there's a few free, quick, and simple things you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, please make sure to like this video, share this video on social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and also if you haven't already yet, make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned to all notifications. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.